Hiranyakashipu and Prahlata. When Hiranyakashipu heard of the death of his brother, he called his mother, his brother's wife and her children and consoled them saying, Hiranyaksha was a hero and he died a hero's death at the hands of the Supreme Lord. The Lord is all-knowing. He is the unseen director. He pervades all creatures and knows no decay. He is pure, truth, endless and great. He produces the three gunas by his maya and appears as though working and moving. But he never moves. Therefore, out of ignorance, we perceive birth and death, knowledge and ignorance, pleasure and pain, joy and sorrow, where they do not actually exist. To explain this, there is a story which I will tell you. King Su uh, Suyagna of Usinara kingdom was killed in a battle. He, His wife, children and relatives sat round his dead body weeping for long. His wife wanted to end her life also. The sun was setting. Lord Yama came there in the form of a Brahmin boy and addressed them as follows. What a wonder you people are seeing every day, men being born and men dying. And yet you are weeping as though you will never die. Can anybody escape death? To return to the place where from one has come is but natural. He who protects us in the womb, who protects us after birth from all dangers, the creator, he alone destroys us. It is all a play to him. The timid animal in the forest is greatly protected. The well-cared-for rich man dies in his own house. This body is like a house built up of the five elements. The jiva enters it, lives for some time and goes out. The body gets destroyed but not the jiva. Both are desperate and independent. Both are separate and independent. He who could have heard your wailings has left the body long back. As long as he remained inside it, you had relation with it. Now he is not there and you too have no connection with the body. He who has left the body will not return to it even if you wait for a thousand years. So have the good sense to return home. Having said so, Yama disappeared. The relatives conducted the last rites of the king and felt relieved. So, to think that Hiranyaksha was killed by his foe is false. He who left the body has no friends or enemies. Out of ignorance, we create the difference of friend and foe. The soul has none. With these words, Diti and others were consoled. But after all this high thinking and eloquent talk, Hiranyakashibu aspired to rule all the three worlds, free from enemies free from old age and with extraordinary physical strength. He did tapas and Brahma granted him all his wishes that his death should not take place on earth or in sky, indoors or out of doors, during day or night, by man or animal or other beings of creation by means of weapons. With the full might of his strength, he began to attack all creatures gods and celestials. The gods had no place to live and they beseeched the Supreme Lord for relief. The Lord consoled them saying that even the most powerful being would meet his ruin when he developed hatred towards him. The gods, the Vedas, cows, Brahmins, devotees and towards righteousness. So when the demon begins to harm his own son Prahlada who was a great devotee he would meet his end. Hiranyakashipu had four sons, Prahlata, Anulada, Samlata, uh, Hlada and a daughter Simhika. Prahlata had great many virtues. He was well learned, free from pride and arrogance. He respected the elders and Brahmins, loved all living creatures and was a friend to the poor. He had controlled his senses. He had conquered his desires and craved for nothing. He had none of the evil qualities peculiar to demons. He was a great devotee of the Supreme and so all learned people, even the gods and celestials used to praise him. 
even as a child he would have no interest in play he would behave as a dunce though fully self conscious his mind was fully absorbed in the lord he viewed the world as the self itself walking sitting eating drinking or lying down he was not conscious of these acts but found himself in the arms of the lord if the lord were to disappear from his mind he would weep if he appeared again he would laugh sing and praise him he would go into samadhi and remain for so for so long he was a source of enlightenment to other children hiranyakashipu first thought that prahlada was an idiot so to educate him he put him under the tuition of two teachers the sons of shukracharya prahlada learned all that was taught to him without a protest fully aware that the teachers were not teaching him the truth a few moment months later his father called for him and wanted to know how far he had become wise prahlada declared that it would be wise to reject the feeling of i and minus and take refuge in shri hari hiranyakashipu grew wild with the teachers for teaching his son undemonic theory the teachers took prahlada again and taught him under threats many lessons to suit his father and brought him back for his father's test hiranyakashipu asked prahlada to recite a good poem prahlada stated that the teachers had taught him knowledge and that he had learned the essence of all knowledge and explained himself thus there are nine methods of showing devotion to the supreme lord and they are having friendship with him in the physical mental and intellectual levels hearing his stories serving him saluting him worshiping him being a humble servant of his consciously remembering him praising him to and to be always meditating on him life without any of these is a waste the hands are intended for worshiping the lord the tongue for praising him the eyes to look at his beauty the head to salute him the ears to hear his sweet stories the mind to think of him the day time is intended for his worship all education is no only to know him a teacher is one who talks of him and a father is one who directs his children to reach him hiranyakashipu hearing this long talk took the teachers to task but they pleaded that it was all the nature of his son which they could not change he inquired of prahlada as to who taught him these perverse ideas prahlada replied people who live like frogs in a well repeating uh, 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 po- people who live like frogs in a well repeating their births and deaths without a knowledge of what is outside cannot know this essence of truth by themselves or even if taught by any expert it can be had only by unremitting devotion to the lord not otherwise hiranyakashipu got wild he called his servants and ordered them to torture prahlada in every way possible so that he might be rectified those demons took him away and began to pierce him with spears he did not protest nor weep nor run away he did not hate his father or call his mother for protection he used to praise the lord by all his names he was established in a state of godliness having merged his mind with him the cruelties of the demons inflicted on him were of no avail they had him trampled upon by elephants and bitten by snakes they threw him into the fire and into the sea he was given poison to drink he was pushed down from the mountain top he never said that these were tortures but took them to be lessons of education hiranyakashipu got vexed with him thought all these to be strange with his son and once again requested the teachers to teach him the rules of right conduct dharma shastras prahlada again went to the teachers and learned what they taught him with the full knowledge that those regulations did not apply to him when the teachers had gone out for other work from the class 
Prahlada would call all the demon children together and teach them Vedanta. Friends, you have seen many children of our age dying away. Why? Our teachers do not explain. Hear my words and you will be benefited. Of all births, the human birth is the highest. This life is only a hundred years long. Half of it is lost through sleep at nights. Of the rest, childhood, youth and old age take the major portion away. The rest is contaminated by Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Madha and Matsarya. Man succumbs to his greed. He gets bound by wife, children, father, mother, money, property, etc. He cannot leave them, gets bound by self-created bonds. He does not know how to escape. The way of escape is only through the gate of devotion by which we can get liberation and reach the lotus feet of the Lord. Do not have contact with the demons who are immersed in sense enjoyments. Even from this childhood, you better learn the way for liberation and try to reach the abode of Lord Vishnu. The method of devotion is not difficult, for the Lord is all-pervading. He exists in all elements and the modifications of the elements which appear as the living bodies. By the cover of his Maya, exhibiting the three gunas, he functions as the enjoyer and the enjoyed, the seer and the seen. But he is unaffected. He exists in all beings. To love all beings is the best way of showing devotion. Thus, one must dedicate oneself to his service. Having heard this, the children inquired of Prahlada as to how he came to know this supreme knowledge. Prahlada narrated his story. When my father had gone for tapas, Indra conquered the demon kingdom and took my mother as captive. Narada met him on the way, got my mother released from him and kept her in his ashrama till my father returned. While in the ashrama, he taught the secret philosophy to my mother, which I heard from the womb and am able to remember the same. The body is perishable. The self is eternal. He is ever unmodified, pure, self-luminous. He is the indweller, support. Primary cause. He is all pervading, unattached, and is full. He has no actions. He is one and has no birth or death. One must investigate and find out the self in his own heart. He is the one who is knowing all the changing states of waking, dream, and deep sleep. The three gunas belong to ignorance. One should know him through devotion. Service to teachers, association of saints, by kirtan, worship and meditation. These will bestow knowledge, wisdom, re renunciation and remove the evils called karma, krodha, etc. Control the senses and develop devotion. Enable one to reach his abode. This body is short-lived but not permanent. One acts through the body for pleasures which in their turn bind him to the fruit and cause him rebirth. This body does not follow us at the death. When dead, even dogs do not touch this body. So it is better to love the Lord and be happy. These teachers do not know this method. Even if they know, they will not teach us. When the teachers came to know of this propaganda, they became very nervous and informed Hiranyakasipu. The demon king called Prahlada and asked him, With whose help he had been doing this kind of counter-propaganda when even the elements feared and obeyed his orders? I am the strongest in the world. I have won all the four directions and there is none else for me to win. Then with whose protection are you defying my orders? Prahlada replied, I have the support of the Lord who is the very cause for all your strength or the strength of the elements or of the gods. He protects me because I have no other protection. You have won everybody but not your own senses and mind which are running wild. If you can control them, you can win any everybody.
हिरण कसिबू से आई हैव सर्च एवरीवेयर बट कुड नॉट लोकेट द गॉड यू आर स्पीकिंग ऑफ वेर इज ही टेल मी एंड आई विल पुट एन एंड टू हिम एंड यू टू प्रहलादा रिप्लाई ही इज एवरीवेयर व्हाई शुड वी पर्टिकुलराइज एनी वन प्लेस देयर इज नो प्लेस वेयर ही डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट इफ वी हैव अर्नेस्टनेस टू इंक्वायर एंड इन्वेस्टिगेट वी कैन सी हिम इन एवरी प्लेस हिरण कसिबू देन आस्क can you show him in this pillar and prahlada replied there is no doubt he'll be there hiranikashipu then gave a blow to the pillar in the court it fell down and broke into pieces there was a thundering sound like an earthquake everybody shuddered out of the pillar emerged a brilliant form human body with lion's head hands and legs with the sharp claws long teeth white furry body ferocious face and red eyes with the roar the man lion caught hold of hiranyakashipu in spite of all his attempts at escape tore his belly opened his heart and drank the jerking blood it was just sunset neither day nor night the demon was placed on the lap which was neither earth nor sky and was torn with the sharp claws which were neither weapons nor tools and was killed by a form which was neither man nor animal after the demon was killed the lord sat on the throne in the palace hall and looked so fearful that nobody dared to approach him brahma indra rudra rishis gods and celestials had assembled there by then and they praised him from a distance Goddess Lakshmi also feared to approach him. Brahma requested Prahlada to pacify the Lord. Prahlada agreed and approached the Lord, bowed his head to touch his lotus feet. Pleased very much with the child's behavior, the Lord touched his head with his hands. Prahlada stood up and praised the Lord to his heart's content. The Lord was much pleased with him and asked him to receive a boon. Prahlada requested the Lord not to entice him as he did not love the Lord for profits or boons. Boons can bring only bondage. His ambition was for the state where there will be no more demands for boons, the desireless state. The Lord ordered him to occupy the throne of his father, enjoy the normal span of his life. and reached him at the end and disappeared thus hiranyaksha and hiranyakashipu the gatekeepers of vaikuntha passed off one birth remembering the lord through intense hatred by putting an end to them the lord had only shortened the period of their separation from him so this was an act of mercy and not punishment